Hello debaters, let's talk T, and T stands for topicality. As you learn in the video title Introduction to Stock Issues, topicality is the part of the debate round focused on whether or not the proposed affirmative plan fits within the resolution. You also learn in this year's introduction to the debate resolution about terms like ground and limits. Now, if you haven't seen those videos yet, check them out before watching this one. This video is one of three videos that covers topicality. You'll also want to check out the effects and extra topicality and the answering topicality videos after you watch this one. Today's video covers topicality as a stock issue and the structure of a topicality argument. By now, you know that topicality is one of the stock issues, which means that it is one of the burdens of proof that the affirmative team must prove to be true. Unlike the other stock issues, inherency, harms, and solvency, the affirmative team will not introduce a topicality argument in their first affirmative constructive. Instead, the affirmative team proposes what they believe to be a topical plan in the first speech. It is then up to the negative team to decide whether they believe the affirmative plan is topical. If both teams believe the plan is topical, neither team will talk about topicality. But if the negative team believes the plan is not topical, the negative team will introduce a topicality argument in the first negative constructive. So how do you know if a plan is topical or not? We'll start with the resolution. Resolved, the United States federal government should substantially curtail its domestic surveillance. And we know that an affirmative team needs to propose a plan that fits within that resolution. Now, our resolution has 11 words, and each one limits the amount of affirmative ground. Removing words would increase affirmative ground, and adding words would limit affirmative ground. For example, if we took out the word federal and just said the government, then that would end up opening up affirmative ground for more cases that involve states or county governments. If we took out the word substantially, then the affirmative team could propose much smaller cases that only slightly curtail the amount of surveillance. Some topicality violations are obvious. For example, if the affirmative plan was to increase surveillance, or if the plan required Japan to carry out the plan instead of the U.S. federal government. Because these violations are so obvious, it's unlikely that you'll see this type of violation. Instead, most of the violations you'll see are with words that aren't clearly defined, words like substantially, curtail, and surveillance. Let's take a look at each one of these three to see why the violations aren't as clear, and this will take us into our conversation about using dictionary definitions to define our terms. If the resolution required the affirmative team to propose a plan to substantially curtail the use of the PRISM program, how would we know what is and what is not substantial? Would a 5% reduction be substantial? What about a 20% or even a 51% reduction? Naturally, the affirmative and negative teams would probably not agree on what constitutes a significant or substantial reduction. And what do we mean by curtail the use of PRISM? Is that measured by the volume of data collected, the geographic area surveilled, the type of electronic communication monitored, and what do we mean by PRISM? Would that include both domestic and international surveillance? Hopefully you're starting to see that because the words we use in any resolution aren't automatically defined for us, both teams should be prepared to defend their interpretation of the word. And have that means having some dictionary definitions to support your interpretation. So let's move on to the structure of a topicality argument. And this next point is incredibly important. A topicality argument must follow conventional structure using subpoints, evidence, theory, and the prescribed format. You probably remember our discussion about shells and front lines from a previous video, and topicality is an example of a shell. It's a pre-written argument that includes all the basic components of the argument. If you leave out one or more components, you're likely to lose. So you would never decide to create a topicality argument during prep time because that would take too long. Instead, you write the topicality shell during the week and have it ready to read at any point in the tournament. This is really the only way that you're going to be effective and use your prep time and have strong arguments that are supported by evidence. It's also important that if the negative team runs topicality, it's always, always, always the very first argument in the first negative constructive. Here's why. Topicality is what we call an a priori issue. That's a Latin term that basically means to be settled before anything else, a priority. You will recall that there are two types of court systems, civil and criminal, and you cannot try a criminal case in a civic court and vice versa. Therefore, if one of the attorneys in a case believed that the case would be tried in the wrong courtroom, that argument would be an a priori argument. It takes priority and it would need to be settled before anything else. At that point, it doesn't matter whether the defendant is guilty or not. You've got to make sure you're in the right courtroom before you start arguing the case. And the negative team is in the same boat. 
If they believe the affirmative case is not within the right resolution, and if the debate judge can only consider j cases that fall within the correct resolution, then any debate about whether the affirmative plan falls within the resolution is a jurisdictional issue and must be settled before anything else. Now, with that in mind, remember that unlike an actual court system where such an argument would stop the process immediately and require a decision from the judge before moving on, Running topicality in a debate round doesn't mean the judge will stop and determine whether the case is topical before hearing any other arguments. So the negative team will run topicality first and then continue presenting all its other arguments. And by the way, since topicality is an a priori issue, then if the judge decides that the case is untopical, it's game over for the affirmative team. It doesn't matter how wonderful or how advantageous the plan is, and it doesn't matter how well or poorly the negative team debated the rest of the round. If the case is untopical, then that's it. Okay, so you're the negative team, and you've decided that the proposed affirmative plan is untopical. You've got your shell ready, and you're going to run it as the first argument in the first negative constructive. Now let's take a look at the structure of a topicality argument. There are four subpoints or parts to a topicality argument, and they must be presented in order. The four subpoints to a topicality argument are interpretation, violation, standards, and voting issues. You can use the mnemonic device I vote, she votes to remember the order. The interpretation subpoint is how you interpret the word or phrase and how it's violated by the affirmative plan. You see, the negative team cannot just say the affirmative plan is untopical. The negative team has to identify which specific word or phrase in the resolution is violated by the affirmative plan. By word, we mean a single word, such as substantially or curtail. By phrase, we mean a group of words that belong together, such as the United States federal government. And if more than one word or phrase is violated, the negative team would run multiple topicality arguments. Whether it's a word or phrase, you need to essentially tell the rest of the participants how you define a term, and that requires a definition. There are thousands of different types of dictionaries, law dictionaries, scientific dictionaries, standard dictionaries, and even governmental dictionaries. Each dictionary defines the words and phrases that are used within the profession. As you can imagine, there are some words that appear in multiple dictionaries, and the definition might change subtly or substantially from one dictionary to the next, depending on how that word is used in that profession. For example, the word substantially might mean one thing to a lawyer and something entirely different to a scientist. We call these differences contexts, and the same word might be defined in completely different ways depending on the context. For this reason, you'll want to have a variety of definitions for each word in the resolution. When you are affirmative, the definitions that for allow for the most number of cases are preferred. And when you are negative, the definitions that allow for the least number of cases are preferred. But you need to stay within context. For example, the word curtail could be used to define the manner in which the government reduces surveillance, but it could also be used to define the manner in which we literally cut the tails off of pigs. Now, the first definition is much more broad because more affirmative cases would meet that definition. And the second definition is so narrow that no affirmative case would actually meet that definition except maybe one. However, the second definition is taken completely out of context and therefore no affirmative plan should be defined in that context. So in your interpretation subpoint, you will read a definition from a dictionary that is contextually appropriate. You do not want to read a definition that the affirmative team meets because that is bad. The next part of a topicality argument is the violation subpoint, and it is here where the first negative speaker will describe exactly how the affirmative plan violates the definition. This can be accomplished in only a few sentences, but the goal is to be clear, concise, and convincing. By the end of the violation subpoint, everyone in the room should understand how you, as the negative team, define the word in the interpretation subpoint and why you believe the affirmative team violates the word in the violation subpoint. So let's move on to the third subpoint, standards. By standard, we mean the standard that the judge should be using to determine which definition is superior, the affirmative or negative definition. And in order to understand standards, let's talk about buying your first car. A standard is a criteria by which you measure something. In this case, we would measure which car is best for you. And you and your parents might disagree on the most important criteria. You might want a car that's visually appealing, comfortable, and fast. But your parents might want a car that's safe, inexpensive and gets good gas mileage. But let's say we're, that you were responsible for using your own money to buy and maintain the car, including the initial cost, plus the cost of insuring, repairing, and fueling the car. So at this point, the most important standard might be cost. But let's say you've got a set budget and there are about 20 cars that are in the price range. What's the next most important standard? Maybe it's gas mileage, safety, or comfort. In the world of debate, you're not using standards to help you evaluate which car is best. You're using standards to help the judge 
decide which definition is best. You see, you already read one definition of the word or phrase in the resolution, and you can predict that the affirmative team will also read a definition. And that results in the judge having to consider two definitions, one read by the negative team and one read by the affirmative team. Now, I suppose you could just leave it at that and let the judge decide, but a good negative team will want to tip the scales in their favor. That means spending a little bit of time helping the judge to decide which definition is best. After all, if the judge agrees with how you define the word, you win. And if the judge agrees with how the affirmative team defines the word, they win. For this reason, the negative team usually reads two or three standards, so the judge has a few pathways to vote for the negative team. And if a negative team reads only one standard, and they lose that standard, then they lose the topicality argument. If they read more than one, they still have a chance of winning. Now, there are dozens of topicality standards, so we'll just talk about the three most common. If you understand these three, then understanding the rest won't be too difficult. Our first standard is ground. And that means the negative team will want the judge to evaluate the two definitions based on which definition more equally divides ground between the negative and affirmative team. A definition that allows for thousands of affirmative plans probably allows too much affirmative ground. And a definition that allows for only three or four plans probably allows too much negative ground. The second standard is bright line, which is another way of saying that the best definition will be one that contains some very clear language that clearly excludes and includes specific affirmative plans. The third standard is predictability. This standard simply asks the judge to choose the definition that best supports a predictable number of cases. Ultimately, negative teams will want to look closely at their definition and choose one or more standards that matches that definition. You wouldn't want to read a definition that defines curtail as cutting off an animal's tail, and then choose a predictability standard, because the definition you just read results in a very unpredictable list of cases. Remember, the purpose of the standard subpoint is to give the judge a criteria that allows him or her to select the best definition, yours or the opposing team's. The final subpoint is voting issues, and this takes us back to the start of the video when we discussed how topicality is an a priori issue that must be settled before any other issue. The only problem is that your judge may not realize how important topicality is, so you may have to make it important. You have to convince the judge that topicality is the most important issue, and you have to convince the judge that he or she should vote on topicality first. Voting issues, or voters, are reasons why the topicality argument is important in the debate round. Just as we had a variety of standards to choose from, we have a variety of voters to choose from. Most teams read two or three voters, and they tend to be the same every round because they are based on debate theory, and debate theory is mostly unchanged from one round to the next. The first voter is fairness. And fairness means that the judge should prioritize fairness above everything else. This means that no matter how wonderful the affirmative plan is, it's ultimately unfair to the negative and should therefore be rejected. The second voter is education. Education means that the judge should prioritize the educational value of the debate round above anything else. An example might include an affirmative team that defines curtail as reducing smoking, and then present some crazy weird affirmative plan that the negative team could not have predicted. The problem with this, according to the education voter, is that the whole purpose of high school debate is to learn. And if the affirmative plan makes it impossible for either team to learn, then the judge should reject it, because ultimately, the education we derive from participating in debate is more important than the strategic games we play when we try to win debate. The third and final voter is jurisdiction, which means that the judge should only be able to consider affirmative plans that are within his or her jurisdiction. And the judge's jurisdiction is defined by the words in the resolution. Therefore, the judge should reject any plan that falls outside of his or her narrow resolution. So those are the four subpoints or parts of a topicality argument, interpretation, violation, standards, and voters. The next thing I'd like to do is show you how to read a topicality argument. In other words, here's what the final product looks like when it's read by the negative team. Note that I've included a quick introduction to the argument, which is a good idea when your judge is not an expert in debate. <clears throat> Our next argument is topicality, and the premise of this argument is that the affirmative team has the burden of proof to prove that the resolution is true, that the United States federal government should substantially curtail its domestic surveillance. Unfortunately, the affirmative team has proposed a plan that fails to curtail their surveillance, which means they aren't proving the resolution to be true at all. Let's begin with subpoint A, our interpretation. We define curtail using a definition from Merriam-Webster's online dictionary in 2014. Curtail is defined as to reduce or limit, 
Now let's move on to subpoint B, the violation. As the negative team, we believe that the affirmative plan violates the word curtail because it, the affirmative plan eliminates PRISM. It doesn't reduce it or limit it. It eliminates it. The resolution asks us to reduce or limit surveillance. It does not ask us to eliminate it. That's the difference between reducing the amount of calories we consume versus eliminating the number of calories we consume. Thus, the affirmative team has not met their burden of proof because they have not proven the resolution be true. Let's move on to subpoint C, standards. We have three standards by which we believe you should prefer our definition. Our first standard is predictability. The superior definition is the one that best allows both teams to predict what the other team will argue. Our definition uses the words reduce or limit, which allows the negative team to predict affirmative plans that reduce or limit. Choosing definitions that eliminate surveillance explodes the number of topical cases beyond what is fair for the negative team to predict and research. Our second standard is bright line. The superior definition will be the one that draws clear lines between acceptable and unacceptable cases. Cases. And our definition uses the words reduce or limit, which includes affirmative cases that reduce or limit, but does not eliminate surveillance altogether. Our final standard is ground. Ground is the field upon which both debate teams play, and each team must begin the round with an equal amount of available ground, just like in football, soccer, or basketball. You should prefer definitions that best divide ground equally, not those that unfairly advantage one team over the other. Our definition fairly divides ground because it defines curtail in such a way that ground is evenly divided. To accept a definition of curtail as eliminate would explode the number of affirmative cases and ground. Finally, let's move on to subpoint D, voters. There are three reasons why topicality is the most important issue in today's round and should be considered before any other argument. The first is education. Education is the most important thing in today's debate round because it's the only thing we actually gain from the experience. Your ballot should be based up or down on whether the affirmative plan increases or decreases the educational value of the round. And if their plan decreases the educational value because it is unpredictable and out of bounds, then that should determine your decision above all. The second voter is fairness. By allowing vague or broad definitions, you explode the affirmative ground to include any case and that hurts debate as an activity because you give one team a clear advantage before the round even starts. Our final voter is jurisdiction. The resolution sets the boundaries for what we can and cannot discuss. It's the only tool we have to limit debate. And if judges start accepting affirmative plans that aren't within their jurisdiction, then the affirmative team has the advantage every time. So, in summary, the affirmative plan is untopped because it defines the word curtail to eliminate, which is unfair to the negative team and hurts the activity for reasons of education, fairness, and jurisdictionality. So let's move on to our next argument, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's a lot of talk about topicality. By now you should understand the role that topicality plays in a debate round. Make sure that you review the major terms and rewind the video to watch any portions you didn't understand. Topicality. A priori issues. The structure of a topicality argument. Interpretation. Violation. Standards. Voting issues or voters. Predictability. Bright line. Fairness. Ground. And finally, jurisdiction. Make sure to watch the other topicality videos in this series for even more information on a couple of other types of topicality arguments you can run as the negative team and how to answer topicality as the affirmative team. Okay, that's all for now. Good luck, debaters.